I think one of the things to think about is that families are almost like um, countries and they come with their own traditions, their own beliefs, their own values, their own cuisines, mm. their own humour. And, and when you in, get engaged in an in-law relationship, you're visiting another country and really the in-laws are almost like the king and queen of the country and you've married into the country. They're the leaders of the country. Mm. So you need to, to explore that relationship with curiosity, with compassion, with an open mind because it's going to be different to the way that your country operated. The theory behind friendship is that there are uh, multiple factors that contribute to a friendship building and one of those is shared experience and when one person one friend can have a child and the other can't and desperately wants to mm. that shared experience is broken yeah. and sometimes putting you know I talk about a friendship sabbatical you, you can almost put the friendship on hold yeah. and, and both if you're open to exploring it and reconnecting down the track you know allow that to happen and that's okay friendships ebb and flow and sometimes we bring too much expectation to a yeah, friendship I love that that don't Maybe lower your expectations yeah, and, and accept that they're mismatched at this time. Yes. Yes. I think it's really important, Yumi, to ask yourself why why the need to share. And for some people, mm. it's simple shock factor, and they get almost like a hit when right. people oh. feedback. You know, if you put something a bit shocking out there and other Facebookers respond or other Twitterers respond then they feel like they've got been given the hit they're seeking. Some people overshare because they're, they're normalising, they're looking to normalise their own behaviour. So when they, when they share a lot of personal information and people come back and say, that's what it's like for me too, mm. they feel like their experience is okay. It's normal if it doesn't impede your day-to-day -day functioning. Mm -hmm. But if you start to see that you're not sleeping, mm. that your preoccupation has gone so far that you're not able to do homework, that you can't carry on with your day-to-day -day functioning, mm. then it's falling outside the realms of, of normal. It's really important to remember that step families are pretty much um, born from loss. And to keep going back to that theme, uh, yeah. that the loss can be from divorce, can be from death, yeah, yeah. can be from separation. Mm. But loss is there for everyone involved on some level. And loss typically is the difference between where we're at now and what, so our reality and our expectations. Mm. I think couples often make the assumption she's not going to want to come because she doesn't have a partner. And well, she can make that decision there's herself. There's that horrible yeah. term, third wheel. And third do wheel? you want a third wheel with us? And I got that a lot. And I was like, Did oh, you? oh really? yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? You might be the steering wheel. You're not the third wheel. Yeah. You're the fun <laughs> wheel. That's right, girl. Yeah. Yeah. So I think value what he is contributing. It may not be financial at this time but he may be helping with the kids, he could be helping in the kitchen, he could be helping in the garden, he could be organising holidays, if you can afford them while you're out of work. <laughs> or he still could be in bed when you get home. Yeah. Right. Depending on how much he actually is enjoying himself. And depending yes. on what he's wearing, that could be a win-win. Right, <laughs> Would you please thank our guest this morning, Sabina Reid.